Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a system of equations by substitution. Now again, anytime you're using substitution, you can also use elimination. You can also use graphing. But the three, the three problems I chose up here, um, I would prefer to use them by substitution. So unless you're told otherwise on a test, um, the reason why I'm going to choose to use substitution for this one is because basically what I have is when you look at two variables. Now again, remember the solution is going to be the value for x and the value for y. That's going to make both of the equations true. So when we look at that, if I look at each and every variable, you can see that each and every variable has a coefficient. Now, every, any single time you have a variable that has a, that's either solved for y, or I'm sorry, solved by itself, like x equals or y equals, you're going to want to use substitution. However, in this case, I chose values that none of them are simply already solved equal for x or for y. However, they all have a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1. So if you have a system of equations where you have one, where you have one equation that's already solved for a variable, you're going to want to use substitution. Whenever you have um, a, any system of equations where you, where you have a variable that has a coefficient of 1, you're going to want to use substitution. But if you just like using always elimination, then you can actually always use elimination if you want to. But I think particularly these would be the best time to use substitution. So, why is it when it has a coefficient of 1 is that important? Well, because it's much easier to isolate and solve for that variable. So the best thing to have would be to have an equation that's already solved for a variable, x or for y or whatever variable we're dealing with. But since we don't have a variable solved for y, I'm going to choose the equation that has the coefficient of 1, and I'm going to solve for that variable. So I have x plus 4y equals 2. So having 1 as a coefficient is nice because to solve for x, all I have to do is subtract 4y. So x equals negative 4y plus 2. And it's that easy. Now, what I'm going to do now, and actually, you know, let me write this in blue. So x is equivalent to negative 4y plus 2. OK, so that's the value of x. So I took this equation and I solved it for x. x equals negative 4y plus 2. Now, to, to find the solutions here, we've got to solve for x or for y. Well, the only way to solve for x or for y is to have an equation in only terms of x and only terms of y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the equation that I have not touched yet, 2x plus 5y equals 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the value of x for negative 4y plus 2. Because using this equation, I was able to solve saying x equals negative 4y plus 2. So I can go back and take this equation and say, all right, well, I'm now going to plug in negative 4y plus 2 in for x. So that will look something like this. Negative 4y plus 2 plus 5y equals 7. Now you can see I have an equation only in terms of y. So I can apply distributive property, and I get a negative 8y plus 4 plus 5y equals 7. I have two variables, but they're on the same side. So I can simply combine them. And what I get is negative 3y plus 4 equals 7. Now I just continue to solve, um, continue to solve my problem. So I'll subtract a 4 on both sides. I get a negative 3y equals 3. Then divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and I get y equals negative 1 is one solution. Sweet. So I got what, what the value of y is. Now I need to figure out what the value of x is. So what I can do is since this variable is solved, I can go back and take that equation, x equals negative 4y plus 2. And now I can plug in negative 1 because that's the value of y. So it looked like x equals negative 4 times negative 1 plus 2. And when I solve, I get negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 plus 2 is x equals 6. So the solution to my equation is y equals negative 1 and x equals 6. Or you could write that as a coordinate point, 6 comma negative 1. Ta-da. OK, so now let's go and get into the next one. So now uh, the next one, you can see that now my coefficient of 1, or my 1 is for y. And it's the equation above, not the equation below. But that's perfectly OK. You're just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take this down here, and I'm just going to solve. So 3x plus 
y equals 16. We'll go ahead and solve for y. So I'll subtract a 3x here on both sides. And I'm left with y equals negative. Oops, let's again do them blue. y equals negative 3x plus 16. OK, so now I've taken this equation and I've solved it for y. Obviously, it would be better if it was already solved for y, but it wasn't, but it had a coefficient 1, so we quickly solved. Then, now I'm going to take this next equation, this 2x minus 3y equals negative 4. Rather than plugging in this equation in for x, now I'm going to plug the equation. Now I'm going to replace y because I've solved for y. y is equal to negative 3x plus 16. So I'm going to plug in what y equals in for y into the other equation. So it'll look like this 2x minus 3 times negative 3x plus 16 equals negative 4. So now apply distributive property. And what you obtain is 2x minus 9x. Um, negative 3, so negative 32, negative 48 equals negative 4. This becomes 11x minus 48 equals negative 4. Now I'll add 48 to both sides. And I get 11x. Now let's do this. 11x equals 44. Divide by 11, divide by 11, x equals 4. So now I know what the value of x, so I'm going to go back to my original equation and plug in 4 in for x. So I take y equals, and I'll just do negative 3 times 4 plus 16. Now, when I go ahead and evaluate that, that will give me the value of y. So negative 3 times 4 is a negative 12, plus 16 is going to equal positive 4. So therefore, x equals 16, or x equals 4, and y equals 4. Or you could write as a coordinate point 4, 4. All right, so let's get into the last example. Now, this one is, you don't see you have a, one or a, a positive 1 in either one, but now you have a negative 1. Now again, you can really solve for any variable. When you're doing substitution, if you want to solve for 3, go for it. If you want to solve or if you want to solve for this x, go for it. If you want to solve for that y, go for it, right? You're going to get the exact same answer either way. It just depends on how hard you really want to work and how many fractions you want to deal with. So that's why I like to stick with the variables that have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So here, none of them have a coefficient of 1, but this one has a coefficient of negative 1. So that's what I'm going to solve for. It's just the easier one to solve for. So I have negative x plus 3y equals negative 5. So to solve for this, um, I have to add x. Oops, what am I doing? I'm solving for x. You want to solve for your variable with the coefficient. So I'm going to subtract a 3y. Ah. And what I obtain is negative x equals negative 3y minus 5. Then to undo that negative 1, I need to divide by a negative 1. So therefore, I have x equals a positive 3y plus 5. So what you can see, ladies and gentlemen, is instead of solving it and only taking one step, because I had that negative one, it would take me two steps. And if you were to solve for like three or four, it would take you two steps, and you would also have fractions. That's why we like to use substitution only when you have the variable with a coefficient of one or negative one. It's much easier. All right, so now I'm basically going to take this equation, and I'm going to plug this in for y in, or in for x into my other equation. So I should write that in blue. So that becomes a 3y plus 5. So therefore, I'm going to take my next equation, which is 3x minus 4y equals negative 5. And I'm going to plug in x, what x equals, which is 3y plus 5, in for there. So it becomes 3 times 3y plus 5 minus 4y equals negative 5. Again, to apply distributive property, I have 9y plus 15 minus 4y equals negative 5. They're on the same side, so you combine like terms. 5y plus 15 equals negative 5. So now I subtract 15, subtract 15. 5y equals negative 20. Divide by 5, divide by 5. y equals a negative 4. So now I know what the value of y is. I can plug that now in for that equation to figure out what x is going to be. So x equals 
3 times negative 4. I'm replacing the y with a negative 4 plus 5. So therefore, x equals 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12 plus 5. Negative 12 plus 5 is a negative 7. So x equals negative 7. So therefore, my coordinate point would be negative 7 comma negative 4. Um, or you could say the solution when x equals negative 7, y equals negative 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations using substitution. Thanks.